Plenty of people use Netflix to watch television, but would you ever use it to play a video game? Because there's news out that Netflix might be entering that space. Our guests this week are Dr Emily van der Nagel from Monash University and app developer Peter Marks. Uh, walk me through exactly what it is that Netflix are talking about doing. Netflix, interestingly, in 2019 listed their biggest competitors not as Disney Plus or any other streaming service, but as Fortnite. So they clearly have an idea that video games is something that they'd like to move into. And so recently Netflix has announced that they are going to try to make their platform a platform for TV, movies and video games. Right. Now, the thing with this, Peter, is that they're entering a pretty competitive space. I mean, and they're, and they're coming from behind in many ways, I would assume, Peter. Yeah, well, you would think so, although Microsoft, Sony and Google all have uh, game subscription services that haven't done that well. Uh, so, you know, Netflix has got 200 million, I think, subscribers for their video service and uh, Microsoft, I think, has a, a tenth of that. So there's an opportunity there. But, of course... Uh, Netflix doesn't have a box. They don't have a games machine. So the big question is, how on earth are they going to do it? They had a bit of a go with the Black Mirror Bandersnatch mm. episode, which was a inter slightly interactive TV show. But it didn't work very well for me because you had to use your TV remote control to try and control the action. And so there's a few gaps there. Uh, how they're going to do it, I guess they're going to use streaming technology, game streaming, which is something Google experimented with, I think, rather unsuccessfully. But, of course, Netflix is very good at streaming. They've got the server capacity. They've got the knowledge there to do it. And their platform, I guess, could be expanded to be a streaming game client. The big question in my mind is what are they going to do for the game controller? They'll have to either support third-party controllers or bring out their own controller, perhaps. Yeah, I guess it really comes down to your definition of a game. Right. So as you mentioned, there was uh, Bandersnatch, there was Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Kimmy versus the Reverend. So they've done these things that are sort of like, let's call them glorified choose your own adventure. Um, indeed, mm. from memory, I think they were sued by choose your own adventure. Um, oh. And so, and there's a few things like this at the moment. So I noticed they've got a new partnership with the mental health app Headspace, where you can kind of do a bunch of guided meditation sort of things with animation. And so I, I guess it, it, it when we talk about them stepping into gaming, Emily, it kind of feels like there's a there's a range of things that could constitute gaming and it isn't necessarily your sort of triple A shoot 'em up sort of comparison, is it? Well, it's interesting. Are, are they actually going to be making their own games or distributing and licensing games? Because I can see, for example, um, just a, a really cute kind of playing around Hollywood, Bojack Horseman, get into some characters, have adventures. But is that the sort of thing that we're thinking? Are they going to be bringing their Netflix originals into the picture here? Or is this a, some other way of, you know, accessing titles that people already know and love? Their strategy for original content has always been, well, has been gradually moving towards owning. So you would assume that it would have to be stuff that they have dedicated to their platform. I would, I mean, that, that would be my assumption, Peter. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, I think they've been down this track with video that previously they didn't have any of their own content and they started to be a production house and they've been very successful at it. So they can upskill on that. But games are very difficult to develop. Typically, I think they'd have to acquire uh, game makers who have the skills to do that already. Uh, I mean, I, I think Netflix's big advantage in this is with their 200 million users, they know a lot about us because they know what we watch. They know the whole history of programs that we watched all the way through. So they would be able to recommend games better than anybody because they've got that enormous data set already, that data science they can lean on. So I think they might be better off at recommending games rather than building them. But if history is any guide, they'll probably start by selling other people's games or renting other people's games and then eventually become a producer as well. All right, there is lots more of this in the podcast. To download this show, it is available right now wherever you podcast. Bye.